So, the world of men's fashion is a wacky, wild, and turbulent place, especially thanks to the internet, where 10 years ago, if you discovered a men's fashion forum looking for advice, they'd say, eh, yeah, just wear jeans and a shirt that fits properly, and you'd be leagues ahead of your average dad just by doing that. Nowadays, while they already existed to some degree, those fashions and forms have diverged and then grown into huge subcultures that include things like your mainstream business attire, high fashion, casual wear, street wear, and all sorts of subgroups under that, including things like your sneaker heads, tech wear, skate wear, pale wave, avant-garde, and then everything Kanye has been in the same room as. On the surface, they all seem like completely different and confusing genres, but it's kind of like how there are a million types of movies, but they're all built on the same principles. So if you break it down into what the actual purpose or inspiration of the different trends are, it starts to make some actual sense. So to start with the obvious, you take business and formal attire, and it literally has barely changed for 125 years besides the fat conductor hats. A basic suit looks fantastic all the time, and the only way it doesn't is if it doesn't fit or you're wearing it at the wrong place. And that's the whole point. It's a super simple yet refined outfit that says, I'm a respectable, put-together person representing a respectable, put-together company, so sign this contract and let's monopolize American Steel. So as that devolves a little bit, you have something like business casual, which is of course much more prevalent nowadays as business has become a lot less face-to-face -face and a lot more online. Um, some people wear business casual or chic casual outfits all the time, but it works better if you're a bit older, because if you're a high school student or university freshman, it can come off as a bit incongruent because there's really no reason you'd ever need to wear a button shirt other than when your date drove you to prom or that one job interview you've had. So it might be good to wait until you've at least paid taxes before you look like you filed someone else's. So, in my opinion, this is the point where things get interesting because you get to your casual, everyday clothes where you can really express your personality by copying what popular rappers are wearing. It's by far the most rapidly evolving area of men's fashion, and I think the most noticeable shift recently has been the huge prevalence of streetwear and designer brands gaining popularity with teenagers and young guys. I mean, not that long ago, the only people who'd spend money on Gucci were rich middle-aged guys buying their wife something for an anniversary, but nowadays the barrier for entry is getting like three A's that semester. The part that I found the most interesting about some of the streetwear culture is that a lot of unfashionable items are worn ironically, where you're sort of saying, I know so much about fashion that I'm wearing something I know is unfashionable, because in order to identify something so unfashionable, you would have to know a lot about fashion. Like a while ago, it would be as simple as wearing a pink shirt and putting your hair in a bun because it was the opposite of traditional men's fashion at the time. Then later it was overalls and a bucket hat because you live in a city and haven't ever caught a fish. And then eventually jean joggers and a NASA fanny pack because you're emulating that one weird kid in middle school. I'm still sour about this because I was literally that kid in middle school and people did not think I was fashionable. I did, however, have a pouch for my laser pointer. Now, this sort of ironic incorporation of uncool items certainly doesn't end there, because some brands seem to have been built almost entirely on this sense of consumer irony. And I think the most brilliant example of that is Supreme. And they were originally a much smaller kind of skate shop clothing brand, but effectively they said, Alright, we're a pretty niche shop with a pretty dedicated clientele. Do you think people would buy just a regular white shirt with a box logo on it for $30? And it turns out they would, and as they got bigger they said, Alright, what about something like a Zippo lighter? And that sold out instantly, but as they kept getting more traction they just said, Fuck it. Nunchucks, sold out instantly. Tennis balls, sold out instantly. Fire extinguisher, sold out instantly. And at one point they must have had a conversation that went, Alright. What is literally the least useful, standalone item we could possibly sell? And someone said, how about a brick? Yeah, a brick. And look, Supreme was pretty big at the time, and everything was selling out, but would people actually pay $30 for a brick? And of course the answer was no, they didn't. Almost no one would pay $30 for a brick. They'd pay $1,000 for a brick, because it sold out instantly. So anyway, hit me up for that collab. Like, like actually though. So once you go deeper into different contemporary fashions, you find some very interesting subcategorizations that explore the extremes of other genres, and some of them are pretty weird. So the most well known is probably high fashion, which does get a lot of flack for being weird, but it's really more of an advertising campaign and for showing off a designer's inspiration for upcoming commercial lines than it is for actual practical wear. So in a way it's almost weird by design, which is neither here nor there for me, but if we start looking at the niche clothing that people do wear on a day to day basis, it brings us to some super interesting trends. So of course a massive group that's permeated all casual wear are your sneakerheads, and these are the people you might have heard of who would camp overnight to cop a fresh pair of Jordans, but they only really wear them once for Instagram, and then they resell them the next day at five times the price to rich Asian exchange students. 
Something like Normcore is wearing literally your entire outfit ironically, effectively dressing as blandly as possible on purpose. Um, Pale Wave is a sort of minimalism that centers around a lack of detail and subtle pastel color palettes. I quite enjoy this look because if people come over to my apartment, I blend in nicely with my IKEA furniture. Uh, then there's All Black Everything, which is also a pretty solid choice if you don't like sorting laundry. I mean, I think it's cool because it makes your washer's spin cycle look like a portal to the fourth dimension. That's pretty neat. And then something like Avant Garde, which is sometimes called Goth Ninja, is way more complicated, but is fundamentally about being able to sneak up on people perfectly camouflaged in the urban environment, and then being able to tap them on the shoulder and they'll drop dead instantly. Um, lastly, we have tech wear, which is the most technically advanced clothing possible. Um, your jacket weighs about 14 micrograms and is resistant to all four seasons simultaneously. Your carbon fiber Gore-Tex underwear is completely waterproof from both directions and has a concealed pocket for up to two Magnum condoms. Honestly, the only downside I can find to a tech wear outfit is that it costs $4,000 and you only use it to walk to work. Now, at this point, we've barely scratched the surface of all the fashion ideas that are out there, but moving forward, all these areas of fashion will continue to evolve in some very interesting and unpredictable ways. Personally, I've been trying to pioneer ComfCore, which focuses on being as comfortable as possible at all times. The only downside that I've realized is that it's the literal opposite of fashion and usually devolves into you not leaving the house and binging YouTube top 10 lists. So yeah, no Instagram traction on that one yet, but I'll keep you guys updated.